Cameron watches as the motel parking lot disappears into the night. They left most of their stuff behind in the room, only bringing along what they absolutely needed. Cameron had wanted to take it a bit slower, to think things over before running away like this. But weirdly enough, it was Devon that was ushering him out as quickly as he could. Well, no. It made sense. What was truly weird was how Cameron had felt, and how he still feels now. Despite what had just happened, despite the absolute horror of it all, there's a part of Cameron that still wants to stay. Stupid part. <laughs> the big dumb dumb, dumb doo doo walnut dumb. brain thought part. Yep, no. He's a, he's a big dummy idiot. Don't be curious about the bad bad. <laughs> Fucking has to doy, get out of here. <laughs> doy. Oh don't, my God. don't chase after the ghosts, you dummy, you big dingus. Cameron has to assume that this is nothing like what Dev had seen in his previous investigations. That maybe he also felt that overwhelming feeling of wrongness. But... It also feels wrong to just leave after, have, after hearing what he had heard. He'd expected Dev to want to stay after Cameron told him about Lupita. And if Dev asked him to stay, Cameron would have done so if only to search for better closure after hearing her scream. Despite Dev's calm appearance, Cameron knows that his mind must be in turmoil right now. Now, with the night ending like this, he thinks that maybe he shouldn't have told Dev what he heard. Yeah, he promised to be honest about it, but the hallucination? No, the vision. Felt like a lie somehow. A trick. It felt real. It happened. But it also felt like something nefarious was behind it all. He felt it when the wolf focused on him. As if that unseen something had taken the wheel and started steering things where it wanted them to go. Even if he has no idea what that something could be, Cameron hopes that's the case. They haven't even, like, registered the fact that one of them is thinking about a wolf and the other one's thinking about a coyote. Mm. The alternative is that the afterlife really is only suffering, and that would mean his mother is in the same place. That everyone's going to that place. Cameron squirms in his seat, the feeling of a suffocating dread creeping up under his neck. Drowning. Forever. Cameron suddenly turns to look at his boyfriend, unable to deal with the awkward silence any longer. Devin? Devin tilts his head slightly in Cameron's direction, brows raised to show he's listening. Uh, yeah, honey? He doesn't take his eyes off the road. Either because it's nighttime or because, or more likely because of what they just dealt with. The bear is being notably cautious. Still, there's a sense of urgency in his driving, like he's trying to get out of here as fast as he can. Cameron struggles to find the right words. I... Um... Hey, let's talk about it when I get on the freeway, okay? I just, I just gotta focus right now. Cameron can't wait until then. Are we coming back? Cameron sees Dev's brows rise again, this time in surprise. N no, of course not. We're done. I'm an idiot for doing this in the first place. And again, I'm sorry. Cameron can't quash the feeling that he should be the one apologizing right now. But... There's a theme park in Peyton called Southwest Adventures. I thought about going there at the end of our investigation, but we could do that tomorrow instead. Don't worry about the ghosts. The, you'll get over the trauma that you just experienced if I take you to shitty Southwest yeah. Sea World. After all, no one dies in Disneyland. Yeah, we'll go to the worst theme park anyone the has ever been to. Yeah, the and you'll get over it. <laughs> 
Dev pauses, apparently waiting for a response, but Cameron can't think of one to give him. Uh, I think it could be fun. Cameron's almost certain that the same word Devin used just before they left to, descri to, to describe how this investigation would feel. Fun. I think we need to come back. We can't just leave things like that. That was just so... fucked. Cameron sees Dev grit his teeth, and the coyote feels himself recoil a bit, like he did on a daily basis with Dylan. Sorry, I... No, you're fine. I... I'm just... having trouble seeing the goddamn road. Let's just leave it until I can see where I'm going, okay, hon? The coyote steals himself. He shouldn't ever feel afraid of Devon. He doesn't need to. I think we should come back tomorrow. Keep this going like you planned. There's something more to this, and I want to help find out what it is. He says it firmly, in a way that he hopes shows Devon that he's not completely fragile, even if he did break down in the, in the motel room. But Devon is quiet, and Cameron feels himself start to get a little frustrated that he's being ignored. But then the bear responds. No. No, I don't think so. I'll probably come back, but with another psychic, I'm not going to put you through that ever again. Despite knowing Dev meant nothing by that, Cameron feels offended, like Devin doesn't think he's good enough or strong enough to do this. It's jealousy. <laughs> but I want to, especially if you're just going to come back. You think I'm just going to sit at home knowing you're back out in this hellhole? You're the most jealous psychic I know. You know other psychics? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Cameron. I've been to a lot of haunted places, but there's something different about this town that feels really off. Fucked, like you said. And I don't want you anywhere near it. Now it's Cameron who grits his teeth. But I want to. Do you still want it? I know you need to find answers, but after feeling what I felt, I need answers too. Dev's careful maneuvering along the broken road hits a pothole and the interior shakes. Devin winces. Babe, please. Let's talk about this later. I just want to get us to Peyton safely right now. And just like that, Cameron's determination dries up. He hates himself for being such a coward. Things had always felt unequal in their relationship, but it was rare for Dev to just say it out loud, to tell the coyote what's good for him, even though Cameron told him what he wanted. It's nothing like it was with Dylan, but the feeling is similar, and Cameron doesn't like that. Well, what if I don't want you to come back here either? Devin takes a deep breath, but manages to keep calm. Then we can talk about it when we're safely back home. Cameron goes quiet again. They're halfway past the lake, the body of water looking like a giant dark pit, except where the moon glitters on the surface, and that's when Cameron sees something out of the, out of the corner of his eye. Uh, there's something on the road between two craters of broken asphalt. Cameron stares for several seconds, not sure if he's seeing what he thinks he's seeing. He waits for Devin to say something, to wonder what the hell is in front of them. But he says nothing, almost like he doesn't see it. Yet, there it is, right in front of them. And it's right where Devin's about to go and the bear isn't stopping. Cameron manages to jerk himself out of his stunned daze. Oh my god, Dev, look! Huh? Dev finally looks at Cameron, his eyes off the road, and still the jeep moves forward. Stop! Why isn't he stopping? The coyote does the first thing that comes to his mind, 
Time slows down. It's just like what happened back in high school, right before I got hit by a car while skateboarding. He has more time to react now than he did then, though, and he slides his arm under the seatbelt to get free and reaches across the center console. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, very bad, very, very bad. No. He grabs the wheel, and even though Dev is try is tr is starting to break, it's not fast enough, and they're at least and they're less than twenty feet away from hitting it. The coyote doesn't even think, acts on pure instinct. Cameron turns the wheel to the right, hard. Hmm. Hmm. Nope. It's a good thing we set up that roll cage in the opening monologue. <laughs> they're they're <laughs> safe, folks. Uh, I had a feeling they weren't going to make it out of Echo. Yeah, I, I knew they weren't. There's zero chance that the town's going to let them go. Devin can't comprehend what Cameron's doing before they hit something. And the jolt is far worse than any pothole he'd hit on the road. Devin is thrown into his seatbelt. In the back of his mind, he's aware that Cameron is half out of his own seatbelt. Driven by what feels like pure reflex, Devin throws his arm across the coyote in an attempt to hold him back. Cameron's muzzle meets the bear's thick arm before his forearm smacks into the screen of the head unit. A numbing, tingling feeling explodes across his entire arm. Ah, fuck! Dev brings his arm to his chest, cradling it as he winces. Are you alright? Cameron's breathless breath <laughs> Cameron's breathless voice next to him is enough to reassure Dev that the coyote isn't seriously injured. The airbags hadn't even deployed, even though the impact had felt serious. Y yeah, my funny bone. What about you? Let me see your face. Cameron tries to grab Cameron's muzzle to have a closer look at him. It's hard to see with only the glow of the jeep's headlights, now dimmed from the swirling dust kicked up by the accident. But Cameron pulls away, opening his door to get out. Cameron? What? The coyote yelps as he seems to lose his footing immediately and falls hard. Cam! Dev unbuckles the seatbelt and almost tries to climb out Cameron's side of the jeep. Then, realizing what he's doing, opens his own door to get out, almost falling himself as his feet touch uneven ground. Dust coats his mouth as he looks up the road, and immediately he can still see Echo from here. He knew this was going to happen that something was going to prevent them from getting out. He could feel it since he started driving. He just didn't expect Cameron to be the one to do it. The jeep is tilted forward, the front wheels wedged into a deep trench carved out by years of flooding across the edge of the road. Dev stumbles around the front of the jeep, squinting against the headlights before looking down where Cameron had fallen, but he only sees blackness. Cameron? He starts to panic, seriously considering that Coyote could have fallen into a sinkhole, but then... Over here! Dev looks back toward the road, the dust finally clearing, and sees that Cameron's already there, standing in the middle of it, looking around confused like he's lost something. What the fuck are you doing? Dev stumbles back around the jeep, just wanting to get the coyote back inside so he doesn't go off running somewhere. The bear already suspects that Cameron is having a mental breakdown, and that if they don't get the hell out of here soon, Dev thinks he might just join him. I saw... I saw someone. Whoa! This is one of those really minor details that people will just go an entire game not noticing, like, they're not thinking mm -hmm. about. Like when a, a character goes under the bed, uh, goes under the sheets in, a, in their bed in a video game. Mm -hmm. But his sprite turned around. Yeah. Despite, despite yeah, having. It's not just mirrored. Yeah, because he has a. Both of them have asymmetrical features, so they can't just mirror them. That is a, cool. That's like, that is an Ellie pulling off her shirt uh, without it clipping yeah. moment. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. totally. I follow you completely. <laughs> yeah, because Devin has text on his shirt, and uh, Cameron has an eye scar that has to be on the correct side, so they have to have a left and right sprite for both of them. That is cool. Cameron, slow down. Let me see your face. It, it almost broke my arm. No, no, no. I, I know I did. Cameron ignores Dev's paws that are reaching out toward him and starts walking up the road, looking back and forth. Cam. Ugh. The stress of the accident, on top of seeing his boyfriend walking back towards the evil town, is too much for Devin. He grabs Cameron's arm, forcing him to turn around fully and face. What the hell are you doing? Cameron flinches and raises his arms up, crossing one wrist over the other, covering his face like he thinks De like he thinks Dev is going to. Cameron, what? But the coyote just lowers his arms, looking around again. I saw something, someone. It was like a little kid sitting on the road. Didn't you see them? Devin just wants to ask why Cameron acted like he was going to hit him. But the coyote is in such clear distress that the bear isn't sure what to say. Then Cameron looks at the jeep as if seeing what happened for the first time. Shit. I didn't mean to crash your car. I swear I saw someone, and I wouldn't do that on purpose. Cameron's breaths start to become erratic, gasping for air. Honey, come here. He's just like completely lost grasp of reality because like, oh, you know, yeah. 20 minutes ago, an hour time, <laughs> it's he was saying, hey, I see things. I'm pretty good at distinguishing reality from fiction. I know not to swerve on the road. You know, I can no, handle he's not this. even registering it now. Yeah. Now he doesn't even register that he has a disease. He is like fully bought into the fantasy at this point and can't distinguish reality from his yeah. hallucinations. This would be deeply worrying to witness. Yeah, this is a full backslide uh, really quickly. <laughs> it's, he's completely fallen off the reality wagon. I can't, can't breathe. Dev wraps his arms around the coyote, even as he starts to try and pull away. Let go. I need to go. Listen, Cameron. Breathe with me. Dev presses the side of Cameron's head to his chest and takes a deep breath. Remember? In and out. Slowly. Devin keeps his voice upbeat, his expression cheerful, the complete opposite of what he's actually feeling right now. But showing how distressed he is clearly isn't helping the situation. So this breathing exercise is also for his benefit. The last time they'd done this was at least a few years ago now. And just like last time, it seems to work. The coyote fighting his gasping for a minute before his breathing becomes more steady, albeit a little shaky. They breathe in unison for a few minutes, the bear stroking Cameron's head like he had, like he had only an hour, a half an hour ago in the motel room. Was it really only two hours ago that he'd been giddy at the thought of a paranormal <laughs> investigation with his psychic boyfriend? Not a great frame of reference for what this was going to be, but I mean, hey, foresight yeah. or hindsight is twenty twenty, isn't it? Like, <laughs> what's new, Scooby Doo? It's coming after you. Finally, Cameron pulls away gently. I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. You said you thought you saw someone. I thought I did. I didn't mean to fuck up your car, though. Well, if you thought you saw someone, then I'm glad you did that. Considering how slow we were going, I'd rather the I'd rather the car run into the dirt than run into, than run over somebody. Now, just hold still for a second so I can check you out. You face planted my arm pretty hard back there. Dev gently turns Cameron towards the headlights of the still running car, lightly running his blunt claws to the fur. I th thought it was an otter. I could see the tail and everything. Well, oh. 
that's a that's certainly a species to choose in this context. Yeah, a kid, a kid as otter. You, <laughs> as you pass the lake. Yeah. One of Devon's claws grazes over a small lump under Cameron's fur on the bridge of his snout, and the coyote winces. Does that hurt? A little bit. I didn't even notice until just now. That's probably from my elbow. What about your arm? Are you sure it's all right? Cameron starts doing his own check on Devin's arm. Dude, my arm is fi- <laughs> ah -ha! The bear yelps as Cameron prods right into a spot that's suddenly becoming very sore. Did that really hurt that much? Uh, not really. It just surprised me. Really? Y yep. See? Bending it without pain. Yeah, I believe you. Just be careful with it. Cameron sighs, looking back at the jeep. I'm going crazy. The relief Devon had felt after seeing Cameron returning to his usual snarky self deflates at those words. What? No, you're not. You're just... We're both on edge right now. Well, it really did feel like I was losing my mind for a minute there. Thanks for helping me. Of course. Uh, now, uh... Just gotta check out the damage. Yeah. The back wheels aren't even touching the ground. Well, I'll have a better... I'll have a better look. Uh, hang tight, babe. I hope you got a winch unless you want to try to lift the front of the jeep so the back wheels touch with your now injured arm. But as good as arms <laughs> injured, so... All right. Echo also has a bad trek record with people trying to lift cars. Devin that is to... that is a weird, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, it only happened twice, but it's weird that it happened twice. <laughs> but yeah, huh, I guess you're right. Devin starts to analyze the status of his Jeep, and he can tell right away that they aren't going anywhere. Not only has it happened twice, it happened twice with two characters that both haunt, two dead characters that haunt Chase. Yep. <laughs> Assuming the otter is who we think it is. Yeah. Both front wheels are almost buried in the sandy trench below. And both the back wheels are definitely off the ground. The undercarriage balanced on the on the road's edge. Uh fucking sucks. Uh, yeah, that's really bad. That can like really seriously damage the uh the frame of the car too. Yeah. I've uh we used to go to the dunes south of Pismo on ATVs and and in particular, my dad would often get in the avalanche, this giant fucking truck, and just drive yeah. up them. But at one point, he just fucking got one stuck on top of the dune, like right on the ridge. And so we had to just sit there and just dig in the sand for hours to get it out. And it's like, that's a heat, that's already a pain, enough of a pain in the ass. But they're just, like, you can't dig out the road. <laughs> no. It's a different problem. Oh. Like, I hope they have anything to work with. Still, Dev gets in, and after telling Cam to stand clear, very gently tries to back out. Oh, it's a, it's got four-wheel drive. Yeah. That is very helpful. <laughs> it is a Jeep. Yeah. The bear winces at the scraping sounds from the metal undercarriage, realizing how desperate he is to get out of here, considering how hopelessly stupid this attempt is. After realizing he's only spinning the, wor the wheels deeper into the dirt, he stops. The bear turns off the engine, sighing and pressing his head against the steering wheel. Sure, it sucked that his jeep is probably all fucked up now, but he can easily afford another one. Wow, bragging! Because <laughs> he's so rich with his mechanical he's engineering so, job. So rich, he's a big, 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 smart yeah. engineer man with a good, with a good job. He's got that Silicon Valley dick. <laughs> yeah, clearly. More than anything, he just wants to, he just wanted to get out of Echo. He thinks back on how strange it was that Cameron immediately tried to convince him that he didn't do it on purpose. Devin didn't need to be convinced because he hadn't even considered that was the case. But because of how he brought it up. 
Devin quickly shuts that down, deciding that now isn't the time for shitty thoughts like that. Oh, like the idea that he made up seeing something just to sabotage the car to trap them in Echo. Yeah. Because he wanted to stay. And return. also just self self blame victimhood. Yeah. That sucks. Fi- finally, the bear gets out, fixing a smile on his face again so Cameron won't feel so bad. All right, so... Cameron? Dev looks around and, to his dismay, spots the coyote a ways up the road, toward Echo again, though he's standing off to the side, right next to the lake. He's looking over the edge, down at the water. Hey, Cameron, you all right? Is he going to jump in? Oh, right, it's not... It's it's there. It's ground level water, not not like a cliff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the bear jogs up to the coyote, putting an arm around him. All right, you all right? Cameron finally turns to look at the bear. Uh, yeah. Stay next to me, all right? I want you to be close after everything that's happened. I was just trying to stay out of the way. Are you looking for something? Dev looks over the edge at the murky water below. Almost immediately afterwards, the bear instinctively pulls back, taking Cameron with him. Yeah, just thought that because otters are good swimmers, then maybe. Cameron lets out a (laughs) fake laugh. Sorry, I'm crazy. Don't mind me. Come on, don't do that. Cameron goes quiet. Seeing just how unhappy Cameron is, the bear takes a deep breath, deciding to tell him. Back in the early 2000s, an otter kid drowned in this lake. I wonder if that's maybe what you saw? Yeah, that's Sydney. That's who he's talking about. Really? Yeah along with a few dozen other people over the last 70 years. I have a list for the lake and other places we were going to go. So you're saying I saw that because I'm psychic. You don't seem very thrilled with that idea. I'm not thrilled with any of this anymore. It only reminds Dev that Cameron could see anything, terrible things, and that could lead to more mental anguish for his boyfriend. Anyway, we are stuck pretty badly. What do we do? Don't worry, we got options. We'd want to get to the highway, but but it's a bit of a walk. I think about four or five miles. That might be a bit too much with it being dark and on a half-destroyed road. I think we should try to get a little bit of sleep, then start walking at dawn. We'll have light, and if we keep up a good pace, we'll get to the highway before it gets too hot and be able to flag down help. Cameron is quiet. So, what do you think? Remember a while back when I asked what we'd do if there was an emergency? You said there was still cell service in parts of the town. Did I? Yeah, Dev, you know what I'm talking about. So he had the solution in mind already, but is opting not to because he doesn't want to take Cameron back into the town. Yeah. Cameron's becoming the 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 the, the problem here. <laughs> like it's not he's not the voice of reason at all. Uh makes way more sense to find cell service right next to us and call for help rather than walk five miles. I don't know, five miles really isn't that far. <laughs> No, it's like an hour and 20 minutes. Less if you hustle. <laughs> I had done it with like a science. Like I just knew there was a... Uh, every time I went to Andrew's house to record uh, Let's Plays, there was a one mile walk I could take directly to his house. But instead I would specifically take this like trip around this entire like triangular neighborhood. And every side of that triangle was another... Uh, Another 15 minutes to walk another mile. It's like it was just very... Was that a mile each, actually? 
Beats me. You know what? Never mind. Nothing matters. <laughs> <laughs> but I have it in my head that it's not it's just not that big of a deal. Back in five the miles fit, is not a big deal now. Back in those Fitbit days, one of seventy five strategies for losing weight that never worked is I I fucking hit that ten thousand steps every day. Didn't matter. <laughs> Doesn't do shit. I don't think it makes much sense at all, Cameron. We were looking for trouble, Devin. I think we'll be fine as long as we're not trying to see shit. But you just saw. It's silent for a few excruciating seconds. Ugh. I just want to get the fuck out of here and get you home. Cameron's ears twitch as Dev raises his voice, which seems to reverberate in silence. But the coyote just goes on standing there, arms crossed like they almost always were. Yeah, psychic or not, I'm unstable. We both know that already. No. But I'm not walking miles through scorpion and rattlesnake infested desert when our solution is right there. Babe, please. I have a bad feeling. Sorry, who's the psychic here? Dev, I can do this. Trust me. We're outside where nothing's haunted and we won't be looking for anything, so I'm going. Cameron. <laughs> he's borderline unreasonable right now. This is no, just, truly he's, insane. I want just, you to know that if if we ever get just stranded in the middle of like <laughs> Utah and you're like, no, man, like we can walk three miles to the ghost town to get cell service. I'm going to leave your ass on the road. It's not <laughs> happening. Sorry, bud. <laughs> I'd prefer if you came with me, though. God damn it. Devin hurries to catch up with his boyfriend, sliding his paw into Cameron's and gripping it tightly. Cameron has a look on his face like he's a bit pleased with himself, and Devin can't figure out why. It's oh, like the coyote God. thinks he's winning some kind of game, and that Devin yeah. has to grit his teeth so he doesn't start an argument all over again. Uh, this is what I was talking about when I said like this relationship could get toxic fast because there's a there's power dynamics in play with both of them and it means yep. that every single fight they get into is going to be yep. a, a full on like transactional back and forth. Every single conversation they have has like a clutch that just keeps getting pulled. Where like they, they there's so many like l they're dancing around so many boundaries all the time. There's a lot of like contesting going on as well. Like when they were like, oh, like I've been to college or like I'm the psychic or why mm -hmm. are you speeding? Like you can go slow. No, man, I can go fast. Like there's a lot of back and forth like that. It's a little, little rough. Just an hour ago, Cameron was sobbing after seeing and hearing terrible things. And now he's walking back in the same direction like it's nothing. Maybe the coyote's more resilient than the bear had always thought. And maybe the bear is finding out how not resilient he himself is. His stomach growls loudly. And when Cameron jokingly asks if he's hungry, Devin lies and says yes. In reality, it's from anxiety. Something he isn't used to feeling all that often. The bear only finds comfort in gripping Cameron's paw even tighter and promising himself that he won't let anything else bad happen to them. So I do have to admit, I am, you know, at least partially proud of Devin for immediately, like, he kind of goes too far and he should have backed out earlier than this, but at least when the shit hits the fan, he's like, nope. No, <laughs> nope, yeah, you gotta he, leave. This so, was, this was he bad. wants out so bad. He's like, this was not a good move. I was a dummy. I have an engineering degree. I should know better than this. I, we need to leave right now. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Man, I, this always feels like it has to be so, this has to be hard to do. It can't be as simple what? as a color filter, can it? <laughs> oh, you meant the art. I thought you were like yeah, no, talking I mean, like, about when going you, to a when ghost you do town. This, <laughs> when the same scene is in a different time of day and the lighting's completely different, I'm like, how do you even... Like, it can't all be yeah. a color filter. It's uh, not a color filter, I yeah. don't think. But I, th I thought you were talking about going to a ghost town, and I'm like, no, no. It, it technically is this easy. easy. You can just <laughs> drive up to them. <laughs> yeah. People have gone to the real Echo. 
And, and yes, or, they have. Or the equivalent thereof. Cameron presses up tightly against Devin's side, breathing in the comforting scent of his cologne. Cam's show of confidence has mostly diminished at this point, especially as they're passing the motel. The coyote has to remind himself why it is that he insisted on doing this when David offered a perfectly reasonable, if slightly exhausting, alternative. Being exhausted is preferable to PTSD. But Cameron could sense the bear beginning to treat him in a way he didn't like, talking to him like he was fragile, like the slightest touch could tip him over where he'd shatter on the asphalt. He wants to prove that he can deal with this. Which is why he has to smirk at himself right now, because he definitely wouldn't have made it this far if Dev were, weren't by his side. Right now, the bear has a steely grip on Cameron's paw, making it clear that he isn't letting go. Meanwhile, their free paws hold their phones, checking every now and then for a signal. It's, it's, it's very much a trip having a... just not having a main character. Which, as opposed to any of the yeah. other Echo Project stuff I've read so far, neither of them are the perspective. It drifts between them, and it gives us a clear view of their conflicts all, at all times, basically. Yeah, there's no there's no perspective fuckery happening. It really is just giving us insight into both of them. Yeah. Very even-handedly. Anything yet? No. Wouldn't we get a signal at the same time anyway? Well... I assume I'll get it first. Oh, because mine's not an android? Yep. If only I had the brain of an engineer to figure out how to work one. Actually, maybe I should turn mine off and let you search for a signal. We should keep some battery life in one of our phones, just in case. Oh, yeah. Good idea. Your battery would probably die before we found service anyway. Phone elitism, the most pointless conversation in history. <laughs> my iPhone has a bigger battery than literally any Android phone I've ever had. <laughs> oh my god, you're this. What's he going on about this? <laughs> what, what's he going on about? Do we really need to swing dick about phones in here? Because I can go, I can swing, <laughs> Devin. You can come at me, man. <laughs> Get out of here. Think you're smart with computers. Fuck off. Cameron turns his phone off while Dev looks on. I wouldn't worry too much about it, though. It's not like we're lost in the woods or something. And I get I let like three people know where we were going. We're going to be fine no matter what, babe. Famous last words, if I've ever heard them. Right up there with, here goes nothing, and I think I took too much. That's dark, given his Yeah, background. that's dark coming from the fucking ketamine coyote. <laughs> yeah, right. Our last words are going to be, holy shit, we live to a hundred. It's a very specific time. And then you die immediately. Yeah, immediately. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure I already screwed my chances at that with all the drugs I did. Along with eating fudge cakes for lunch whenever I'm at work. Uh, seriously, Cam? Hey, it's in the vending machine right next to my cubicle. Well, we're changing that as soon as we get back. Oh, How are you the... going to do that aside from stalking me at work? <laughs> the, the big, the big dumb, uh, nearly immortal, larger boyfriend wanting the smaller boyfriend to, to change his habits to live longer. Yeah, <laughs> there's one I'm thing just... about that too that this I is think a stretch, it is obviously, frustrating. But... <laughs> It's just like the the uh, <laughs> working at a shitty job you fucking hate, like especially in cubicle hell is rough. And having that one lunch that doesn't make you want to die is like is just oh, yeah. so important to keeping your sanity that like, sorry, bro, lunch at the shitty cubicle job is off limits. He can eat whatever the hell he wants. Yep. Uh, I went to the same worked, teriyaki place every day when I worked at the yeah. waterboard. When I I had a job where I worked for an architecture company and uh, I could not stand it. It was terrible. Um, I was just doing like desk work. I have no connection to architecture in, in my actual career. But uh, 
they had a vending machine and it was like one of those like small boutique vending machines where like it, it was like refrigerated like someone would come and stock it every day um and they had these like turkey and avocado and like s- cheese of some kind i don't even know what kind of cheese it was it was like it wasn't like swiss or cheddar it was like havarti or something i don't remember um sandwiches and they had like so much salt in them there it was like literally unhealthy amounts of sodium just to keep it fresh but there was something about that that i would just eat it basically every day i would pay the you know four dollars and sixty cents or whatever it costs to pull it out of the vending machine because just the just a, a, a soft breaded very plain and inoffensive but like comfortable sandwich in the middle of a job that made me want to dive off of the seattle pier every day was like the one thing keeping me back from just losing my mind so fudge cakes unfortunately are off limits for Devin. he tries to take those away and i am on he is on my shit list yeah after all the goodwill's lost but i was just i was just playing the game where you're like oh it's another howley thing let's see what similarities we can find and this it was it was a stretch but i was thinking of amicus and uh, wanting marco to take the life extending medicine Oh, in that yeah, conversation, yeah, yeah. but that's listen. They can't all be spiders. <laughs> <laughs> so how one. are you going to do that? Aside from stalking me at work, I'll make your lunch. They're going to have us start working from home on Monday. Remember, I'll have plenty of time. <laughs> it is a COVID. It is COVID. It's a COVID. <laughs> it's a pandemic story. <laughs> it's, this feels like a period piece now because of oh, how man. long, long time ago that feels at this point. We're going to wow. start working home from Monday. Bro, I never went back. Yeah, the impending shutdown for the first time. There's something like, very goofy about, uh, like, this is a world where it's not, er- like, it's superficially, seemingly the United States, but they don't call any of the countries the same thing. And there's enough other changes that you're like, oh, it's, but it's like kind of the United States, but not really. Like, I don't know if they had like, I don't know, World War II or whatever. But then like specifically being like, <laughs> wonder the, what the, species Jesus is. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, like literally, them, the fact that they have like, like we know they have like the superhero movies and stuff. So it's, just, it's very funny that they had COVID at the same time. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> like it's so, it's very goofy. We're like, all right, well. The, 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 this is extreme. It's they. They are like a lot of well, furry fiction. Like they uh, are just humans in animal costumes until all the weird details where they're not. Yeah. Well, it's like how people have been commenting on how the New World Trade Center is in the Mario movies, New York skyline. So people are like, 9-11 canonically <laughs> happened in the Super <laughs> Mario universe. And it's like, on one hand, like, yeah, I kind of would expect that because like the Zoomers watching this movie weren't alive for the old Trade Center. So of course, they, that's the skyline that they would recognize as the new one. I didn't even but realize also- that they used the New York skyline for real. <laughs> Yeah, and it it's in the back of like the one of the commercials, I guess. I don't I don't know. Uh, uh, in the in the story, I didn't watch the movie yet. I haven't gone to see it. Like that's just, cano- that's just canonically me. part of Mario's childhood in the cinematic universe yes. is that he lived well, through 11 <laughs> in close proximity as a New Yorker. Yes. Well, it's funny because I was I was literally just I made a, I made the joke earlier today when someone just, like said that to me. They pointed it out and I was like, imagine Mario like walking down the street to get a Brooklyn hot dog and then he turns around and watches the Twin Towers fall. Like that's just <laughs> that's just too much of an it's image. Such a juxt- for- it's such a dis- Stressing juxtaposition, <laughs> like truly, <laughs> truly a combination. I never can. Why did they have to do it? Why did they have to put it in real life? <laughs> no. So I guess what I'm saying is, did 9/11 happen in the Echo universe? Uh... Where was Chase during 9/11? <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, uh, oh. Yeah. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Uh, where are we? Oh yeah, it's the shutdown comment. Hell, oh, I'd be surprised if they don't start making you work from home soon. We'll be like co-workers. Hot fat chance. They don't give a shit about our health there. Well, we'll see. Either way, 
You'll be li you'll be living to 110, so you'll have to you'll have plenty of time to think up your famous last words. Cameron has to wonder if their meandering conversation is purposeful on Dev's Park, if only to distract him from what's across the road. Either way, the coyote is thankful for it. Only if you make it there with me. What's across the road? What's across the road? It's just the hotel, or...? Yeah, what was across the road? He said Cameron, right? Yeah. Where were they? They're, I think they're just at the... hotel. Yeah, I think, I think they're just... I think he's just seeing something again. They're not telling us what it is. That is an incredibly ominous and very yeah. cool, subtle, spooky thing. Like I the, like that a lot. Yeah, it's it's just like the it's like the car scene in the prologue. Like, just he sees something. It's not, and that's it. It's just that he just sees things around, and we're just not going to describe it this time. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, is incredibly distressing. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs>